Hello, everyone. My name is Antonio Juarez. I am 38 years old. I am a software engineer by occupation. I, I have worked with Google for seven years. I now work in a robotics company. <clears throat> My peers believe me to be somewhat a, a clear-minded person, if sometimes absent-minded. Um, I studied computer science at Carnegie Mellon University, actually machine learning at Carnegie Mellon University and computer science in Guatemala. <sighs> And I am here today to say that I know that the inner world exists. <laughs> the inner world, the esoteric realms that many different disciplines and teachings and religions and people speak about, the divinity that religions point to, kingdom of God that Christianity talks about, the, the God within that the Eastern <laughs> scriptures and teachings talk about, the energetic centers that many teachings teach are in our bodies. <sighs> The dream worlds that Carl Jung pointed to, I believe. The ecstasies that the whirling dervishes of the Middle East uh, experience. The outlandish experiences that, <laughs> that people um, consuming psychedelic substances also report so many of these I cannot claim truth to all of them or sincerity to all of them I just know for certain that <laughs> that it exists and I <laughs> And I prefaced saying this now by my professional status in the world and my educational status in the world because I have seen in the world that that is rarely or never a combination ever acknowledged. The bringing together of the modern westernized rational education and the esoteric uh, intangible unproven <laughs> um, beliefs uh, Facts, words, truths, 
I will call them truths. The truths that the, that the East, and the truths that the Eastern beliefs talk about. Um, or Western mysticism for, in, for that case, because there has been mysticism all over the place. The truths that mytho mythologies talk about, uh, cre the creations of the world, um, there are so many things that exist in the world that talk about esoteric uh, realities. Uh, and I don't know the... I, I keep, don't hold a person with empirical, empirical experience to verify each and every one of these things that I'm saying. <clears throat> But what I can verify now with <laughs> the most certainty that my mind has been able to, <laughs> to grasp is that the inner world is real. It is real. It is in us. It is not just in us. It is around us, through us, is us. It generates us continuously. <laughs> and I find it so very important in the world that this be acknowledged with absolute certainty. <clears throat> Not necessarily with tangible proof and it says, here, look at this evidence. <laughs> there is barely any evidence to be brought into the physical world from those realms, but they exist, they affect us, they, they manifest through us. I wish it to be said in the world, I wish it to be acknowledged in the world that this is true. Because I know that there are people, there are many, many people who hold these beliefs. Who know this, who have experienced this. And they are, many of them are not willing to, to state out explicitly those experiences and those truths. I have heard it spoken in whispers in the, the, the little silent corners and special events and only to certain people, only whenever you know that certain trust exists for different reasons. Um, uh, because perhaps fear of rejection, because uh, the fear of shame, because perhaps the, uh, because there is no proof to be, <laughs> to be had, to be offered. It's not spoken openly, particularly by people who have a, um, um, a, a firm westernized, uh, uh, what is it, growing up life. A, full, a, a firm westernized role in society. By westernized, I mean the modern world, the one with where technology and science and the mind and the rational are the uh, <laughs> the high, the, the, the most high, the things to be revered. Oh, intelligence is it not the important thing in this world? Because with intelligence, we can make technology and we can understand and it is important. And yes, that is all important. It is all important. It's not to be rejected. It's... But very often also, 
people who who live in who 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 live in these in this westernized mode and just ah did this just turn off did you turn off is it still recording hello 1028 oh okay I'll continue um what was I talking about Westernized role, uh, science, yes, rational minds. Rational minds want, wants proof. Science wants proof. I think it's a completely right way to work, to go about things, because <laughs> in the past it has not been the case that proof has been needed and things have been believed when they have not had any firm cause to be believed. So, completely yes, yes. <laughs> science rejects that, that which is not proven. Great, great. However, often at times uh, th these uh, these offers of other realities that exist and, and experiences that don't fit in with the, what the rational mind has uh, has uh, oh, what's the word like when like when wine drops and makes a when it has been distilled <laughs> into which the in, into which human experience has been distilled. It, when new experiences come up and they don't fit in with that which has been distilled from human observation into the science and technology that we have today, it is, it is, it is rejected. Not, not, in, not only is it rejected, it is, it is shamed. It is shamed and it is ostracized out from society and said, no, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Are you crazy? And, and with this shame, then naturally the reaction of people who have these experiences is not to talk about talk about it, especially if they have a role in society that requires that shame not to be there, like a, uh, a profession, a profession, a respected profession to hold in the world, to uh, acquire income and to, uh, to be respected by my peers and to have friends who also need to respect me for me to, be, to fit in their social circle. And with this shame, with this um, this culture of shame of, of new realities that has uh, happened in the last, I don't know, one century, two centuries, um, well, the new experiences and the new realities don't dare to come out. The, the new evidence doesn't dare to be shown out to the world <laughs> because they're afraid of, of being rejected from society which is a pretty bad thing to have happen to us in a such a tight-knit society as today we where we rely on everyone else for our survival for our shelter for our food for our clothes for our everything um and most of us are specialized in one field that alone would not provide for survival, uh, almost at all. And of course then it is, it is natural that these experiences of new realms of, 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 of unknown, of, of a wide, widely unknown realms are not presented to the world because people are afraid that they will be shamed, that they will be pushed out of society, rejected out of from society, seen as unfit to think, seen as unfit to, 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 to fit in society, in society that does not include, uh, does not explicitly include these, these inner realities, <clears throat> Where is the role of a person that does, that does accept that these inner realities exist? That <clears throat> claims truth to openly to the chakras and to <sighs> and, and 
to the well, the deep truths that are to be found through dance or through singing or through psychedelic substances or through meditation. <clears throat> All of these practices, practices that that exist, they do exist and and they are mm, slowly creeping into society. Yoga has become fairly well accepted and exercise of the physical body oh, good good that is good and it has been accepted accepted in in, in what is it open society only because only because it also it has produced evidence that it's good, that it's good enough for for society oh it relieves stress okay stress is a, it's a proven enough thing okay well then then yoga is a good thing because it relieves stress so we will allow it to be in us and slowly things are being accepted in the world, I see. And I feel it is uh, it is slower than than I would like. It is slower than I think it needs to be. Because new evidence and some new experiences are coming up I'm sure day by day, week by week, hour by hour by throughout the millions and billions of people all around the world. I don't <clears throat> know about most of them, I'm sure. What I know is that I have sought these experiences <laughs> from a, a natural urge to know what is the truth. <laughs> And uh, um, I, <laughs> I am here to verify, to not to testify to that truth, to the truth that, that that thing that people call God exists. That that aspect and quality that people talk about as love exists. That the these intangible things of the human experience, like emotions and thoughts, uh, and apparently crazinesses that exist that, that exist they. I want to testify that they are, that they are, <clears throat> that they are part of our world. That they are not things that occur merely in our <clears throat> arrangement of, net, of neural cells. Not just here, perhaps, but all in the body. But it's, it's, not, it's not isolated experiences and glitches. They correspond to a wider truth of reality that we all are. God. Gives us life continuously into and through our human channels that we have grown and it is our responsibility to flow it through to the rest of the world. We humans are, are relatively special in this world that we know because we are the only beings with physical form, this material form, dense physical form, and 
the ability to contact our rationality, the realm of the mind, and the higher realms through the mind. I felt how important it is that at each moment in our lives, did you turn off again? Again, are you running? 2053. I hope your audio is still running. It's every 10 minutes. I feel it highly important that at each moment in our lives we develop the ability, the capacity to trust in, in us and in what is happening at each moment. Because this trust can allow the whole of us, the, the entirety of us, to relax. To relax our physical body, to relax our emotional body, to relax our mental body. Each of them uh, subtler, lighter than the, than the last. But they all need this relaxation so that the, the fluids, the energies, the, the influences from the higher realms can flow into us and through us. Because these energies and fluids are, as far as I've experienced it, beneficent. Not specifically to each individual human, but to the entirety of human, of, of human, uh, of humanity. And not just to humanity, of beneficence to the entirety of existence. And what this flow is intending to, to do through us, through us, is to, <laughs> to, to flow life into us, beneficent life into us that allows us to grow, each of us humans, and yes, the rest of the world as well, in ways that may seem paradoxical for uh, for a human to say when the, it seems that humanity is is uh, <laughs> is damaging and destroying the the physical kingdoms the, the physical kingdoms the the uh, mineral kingdom the vegetable kingdom and the animal kingdom But as far as I've experienced it, it is beneficent. And one is asked to trust continuously by these forces. So that one's role, one's, in our case, one's human role can be fulfilled in this life that we are in.
human life. Human life. Humans, um, human growth. When we grow, our growth is, our, our growth and our maturity is closely tied in with the concept of regulation, of regulating the, these bodies that we are given and or that we are, we grew, we're grown. <sighs> I say it in these <laughs> uncertain pronouns because <clears throat> in the context of the higher realms, the individual merges into the whole and the concept of who does what to whom is <sighs> different and I don't understand it. But coming back to regulation, <clears throat> I believe and believe by believe I mean, I mean, <laughs> regardless of whether it is etymolo etymologically the correct, uh, the correct root, by believe I mean that I live by, I live, I live as if assuming that this is true, with the <clears throat> assumption that this is true is that um, uh, regulation yes i believe that um, this maturity or growth is tied up with regulation with the training slash taming slash controlling of these bodies that we built slash grown. When our consciousness comes into, uh, into being, as I read it yeah, at birth, we are given a fully formed physical body, but a very seemingly incoherent way to manage it. We are basically um, helpless with ourselves. <clears throat> and so our task for the following few years of our lives is to learn how to regulate our physical bodies. Our, well, in the, <clears throat> in the terms of <clears throat> some literature that I've read, it's actually the training of our etheric bodies that are that is that is that are closely linked to the to our nervous systems where we are learning matricity where we are learning the the how to regulate the the things that we do for our physical body how to regulate the way we eat how to regulate the way we uh, excrete when do we excrete how do we excrete when is it <laughs> When is it comfortable? When not? Where is it correct to do so? How to how to uh, regulate the strength that we that we exert so that it is so that it's not too strong that it damages and others not too weak that it's that is uh, we are unable to take care of ourselves. Um, physical regulation um, that happened for a few years. <clears throat> And that I've seen in the world, uh, that's it. that is uh, usually well done. <clears throat> and then afterwards, as I continue to say, I believe that the next natural step for us to organically grow into is to be able to regulate our emotional bodies. And... Um, this I see as less effective, less widespread in our society. <clears throat> um, 
it is somewhat taken care of, at least externally. Whereas a crying child will at least know not to cry on certain occasions or not to be too aggressive on certain occasions. But very often, rather than actually processing the emotion and actually knowing how to, how to, um, how to truly process, how to truly regulate oneself, because people believe that emotions are this ethereal, wishy-washy, non-existing, non-existent thing, it is, it is ignored. And the, uh, the general consensus is that, oh, if they, they stopped crying, that's almost good enough. Ah, if they stopped being damaging and angry, oh, that's almost good enough. And we we fail to process these emotions and we carry them through our lives. And I see that in the world, many, 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 if not most, if not all, of us humans carry emotional wounds that make us unable to correctly take care of us and of each other in the long run. I believe that emotional regulation is the one uh, critical practice uh, that we humans if we included them in our in our cultures they would cause the most positive impact at least releasing impact in the world because what i see in the world is conflicts unhappinesses lonelinesses hurts <laughs> Vengeance, uh, revenges, uh, both. Uh, frustrations, resentments, lifelong resentments, generations of resentments and of hurt and of sadnesses, wars. selfishnesses between individuals, between families, between countries, between continents, between genders. We have hurt each other for so long. And I think it is supremely important that we learn how to stop doing this to ourselves. So I speak, and I try. Because I have not seen public acknowledgement of these things, or a clear statement about these things, at least not from, not from people who also claim to be uh, traditionally uh, well fit in with society. And I don't wish to apply blame or, 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 or anything of the sort, but <laughs> I had right, right to see there's a gap there. There is a gap. There are people who, uh, who grow on the rational side of things. Great, that is good. There are people who grow on the esoteric side of things. Good, that is great. There are people who do both things. Good, and there are, but and they, 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 they express 
their interest in one of them only in certain circles, and they express their interest in other events, in, in other uh, topics, on the other topics, but only in certain circles, only in certain circumstances and contexts. And perhaps when when one has already rejected one side, then one goes to the other and allows oneself to fully to fully accept the other. And I, what I see the gap is that there is no gap that joins the two and acknowledges it is all the same. <laughs> it is all the same, and one doesn't need to <laughs> to be crazy to be able to say this. And one doesn't need to be afraid. that one will be ostracized. <sighs> From society. Well, fear, uh, that's another topic. <sighs> but I see that gap. And that is why I am here to say this, to say it is all true. To say that the rational deserves focus, to say that the esoteric deserves focus. And whoever is interested in it, may they have the openness as well to, to show themselves, both to themselves and to others. Because only then, I believe, will the, this acceptance of, of the, the need for of the inner realities come. <clears throat> Many people these days speak of the coming higher energies and that the world is changing and that we will there is a revolution coming and we are evolving into something. I, I don't know about all that. <clears throat> I know that we are growing humanity rapidly. And And whether this is a critical point in our development, I don't know. It feels like it. What I know is that there are uh, gaps in our cultures and our societies very often because of this uh, culture of shame that we have against each other and against our different our different parts of our cultures truly uh, the divide between science and religion has been enormous for a long time centuries now i think And I believe it is critical for us as humanity to bridge them again. That is why I am explicit with my statement. I work professionally in software engineer, engineering. I have studied machine learning, computer science. I know the concepts of physics and chemistry and organic chemistry and the uh, processes that make our weather occur and uh, the reasons why uh, uh, why science has ridiculed uh, at times traditional ways of thinking traditional uh, attributions of the why of things to one another. I want to acknowledge that. <clears throat> and fully knowing that there perhaps is shame or 
not sh not there is no shame from my side. That perhaps that there is uh, rejection to be had from society. That there is to be ostracizing from society. Um, but I want to say that the the inner realities exist. The esoteric realities. If if it tries to be a more complete way of of expressing um, oneself. I think this is a a good first part of this video. I will continue talking. I probably will place this in another in other videos.